Dear friends, guests, members of Messiah Lutheran Church, and especially the couples gathered here today, grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. A few months ago, I read an article that was written by Religion News Service relating to a survey that they had carried out on religion race, and relationships. RNS found out that the old adage, a couple who prays together stays together, may also be true here in the USA. In general, the survey found, that, found out that American couples in same faith relationships who attend church more regularly and participate in prayer and study of the word of God at home we are more satisfied with their relationship. Yes, the truth is that marriage involving a Christian husband and a Christian wife, both of whom belong to the same faith and attend the same church regularly, results in a lifelong relationship 85 to 90 percent of the time. Now please understand me when I say this. I am not talking about marriages between husbands and wife who may claim to be Christians. Statistics here in the United States show that 8 out of 10 couples claim to be Christians. Out of these, 4 out of 10 say that their faith is important in their lives. But again, only 2 out of 10 practice their faith and ch attend church regularly. That's why the statistics about divorce in the United States may be pretty the same for Christian families and non-Christian families. But find couples in our society today that have a lifelong relationship is becoming indeed rare. They are few and far between. That's why you and I today are privileged be in the Lord's house to hear what he has to say about our relationship. If I may ask you a question, do you honestly think that God really cares about your family life at this point in your life? Are you single? Are you married with kids or without kids? Are you a single parent? Are you involved with a stepfather, stepmother, stepsister or brother? Does God really care about your family? To answer this question, I want to share with you one of the most beautiful Bible texts, but there is a problem. The culture we have grown up makes it difficult to hear the word that God wants us to hear. You might find this text challenging to listen to, if you do not think of the others who are gathered here today, and especially even those you are seated with in your pews now. Before you look at each verse, you may need to see who is in the middle of our text and who is in the middle also of our relationships. The secret about the blessing God wants to give you in your family and in my family too is to look at the person whom this text reveals to be in the middle of our love relationships as a family. Paul in the 23rd chapter says to the Ephesian church, Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the savior. Now as church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, pleasing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. This is the profound mystery. But again Paul says, but I am talking about the Christ and the church. It is Jesus who stands in the middle of your family life each and every day to care and to walk with you in your faith. 
Brothers and sisters, the challenge for us today is that the text around this beautiful reminder of God's love for us are words that our culture misinterprets and many times misunderstand. This text bring to mind how we are raised and how you interpret these verses on the basis of that experience and we often carry out our family life the way we are raised. In the context of Ephesians, which Paul proclaims what God has done for me and you in Christ, he begins this new section that applies to a new relationship with Christ with this message. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Remember what God has done for you. If you remember this, reverence for Christ is living a life that respects the fact that he is the one who has rescued us from our sin and called us to be his own. What the Lord says to Paul and what Paul says to us might be foreign to our culture. Yet in this context, Paul speaks those who are husbands here today and even those who will be husbands in the future. In verse 23 he says, For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, for which is his savior. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water and through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. In this way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hates their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. For we are members of his body. God's will for you, husbands gathered here today, is clear. Love your wives unconditionally with agape love as Christ loved the church. Christ did not love us because we loved him first. The same is required of you to love your wife unconditionally, to love her in spite of, love and take care of her just as Christ loves and takes care of the church. What makes a great marriage is allowing Christ to take central stage. Husbands, when you fall in love with your wife as God commands, then he himself comes into your relationship. Many times even you fail, remember, it is Christ who when he takes central stage forgives you for your failure restores you through his word, and even continue to walk with you in your relationship as a husband to your wife. Paul calls you today to serve Christ as you love your wives, aware of their needs and their desires. And if I may ask, how can you meet her desires? As a husband and the head of the wife, you have a greater responsibility not rule over your wife, but to be a servant leader in the family, just as Christ has been a servant savior to the church. The Holy Spirit empowers you through the word of God to live as a servant leader in your family. You as a husband are united to your wife, and this is the will of God. In the midst of this context, Christ living for us and being our head, who has given himself for us, the word of God speaks to wives also today. Paul says, wives, submit your souls to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body for which he is the savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit their husbands in everything. I am now speaking to those who are married, the female wives married to a male husband. As a wife, 
Live under the authority of your husband, not as a lesser person, but a servant of Christ. And as a wife, live under the authority of your servant leader. As a believer lives under the authority of our servant savior, Jesus Christ. Just as God has called your husband to lead on your behalf and share your concerns, support and respect him also as the way you honor and respect Christ. He has been called to love, respect, and honor you in everything. If that is not present in your marriage life today, Paul says and calls you to be filled with the Holy Spirit who will help you win over your husband by your own life under his leadership. Remember how we believers place ourselves under the headship and leadership of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is a model of a, a perfect husband as the husband of the church. Brothers and sisters, St. Paul uses the perfect model of marriage between Christ and his church as an example for husbands and wives to follow. If all of you married couples here today we are able to follow this model of the perfect marriage to perfection, you would have a dream marriage. The problem is you can't. For all of us live in an imperfect world, many times we don't meet our expectations, we don't meet our roles and responsibilities in the marriage. I know that wives gathered here today there are times when submitting to your husbands was the last thing you want to do. Husbands, I believe there are times when loving your wife has been the last desirable thing for you to do and even meeting her needs. However, remember that yours is a marriage within a marriage. Because both of you are members of Christ's church and are united with him in the perfect marriage, your earthly marriage to one another is blessed. The relationship experts and sociologists of the world can offer you all their pearls of wisdom on how to have successful marriage, but the fact that those suggestions are available there does not matter unless when you give room and space for Christ to be at the center of your marriage. It is your mutual dependence upon each other and your faith in Jesus Christ, the perfect husband, who forgives your sins when you fail, loves you with true love and cares for your every need that continues to get you through the tough times in your marriage. It is when you focus on the cross of Jesus Christ that he makes it possible for either of you in your marital relationship to forgive one another when you fail. For more important than even the counseling we receive before marriage is when as married couples we continue to meet together in worship, partake of the Bible studies and other programs within the church that constantly reminds us of our relationship with Christ even in our marriage that we are able to live up to our calling. I want to encourage you to continue sharing your mutual faith in Jesus Christ, who is the only one who can keep you together in the holy bond of holy marriage. Or to put it this way, and in simple terms, as long as you pray together, you will stay together as a couple now, even into eternity. May his name be glorified now and forevermore. Amen. Now may the peace of God that path a soul understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ.